What is up YouTube? In this video, I'm going to cover an important aspect of a data engineer's day-to-day -day job, which is building uh, streaming pipelines. So specifically, I'm going to talk about in this video would be Spark Streaming. I will cover a few things. Uh, one would be just the what exactly Spark Streaming package is, what you can do with it. The second would be uh, what's the best way to use it, like uh, how do you can go about uh, using the documentation which is already available. Uh, the third would be I would try to implement this uh, with an actual example, with a real life example uh, using Python. Basically, Spark Streaming is part of the existing core Spark API that allows you to build scalable, high throughput and fault tolerant uh, real time pipelines. If you're trying to build any, any pipeline and if you're trying to build any pipeline for a project, the, there's one key decision you need to make. Uh, either it can be like a batch pipeline that takes like bulk of this data and pushes it together. Uh, uh, the other is uh, the streaming pipeline, which is like a more of a real time pipeline. If your use case kind of requires you to get the data in near real time. And that's where the, the concept of streaming pipeline comes in. So yeah, Spark streaming is like any other pipeline you can build, but it's just in real time. So data can be ingested in different from different sources like Kafka, Kinesis, or like even real time TCP sockets. Uh, and then you can use this data to functional transformation, which already uh, Spark supports like MapReduce, Join and Window. And then uh, once you have finally processed the data, you can push it out into system, uh, file systems, database, and even like live dashboards. You can also apply like machine learning algorithms in near real time when this data is coming in. As a next step, uh, we're gonna look at the programming guide. I would definitely recommend uh, you checking out yourself and exploring it on your own. Uh, it's quite comprehensive. Uh, if you wanna like do it by examples, it's already there. You just try to out, copy and paste a few examples. So that's the idea. But uh, as a key concept, if you can go to apache.org and go to programming guides, uh, you, you get two options. One is structured streaming, the other is Spark streaming. The idea is basically Spark supports two, two types of streaming already. Uh, this is more legacy, this is more new. The structured streaming is, is quite aligned with the, the, data frame, uh, the data frame API, which Spark already has. So yeah, uh, if you want to check it out, you can go here, you can look at quick examples, programming models, and uh, you, can, you can just do it by example. To go to you can select Python if you're if you're using uh, PySpark. I'm specifically used by PySpark for my transformation mainly, but you can create a Spark session and then read the stream wherever the data is coming from. It comes from a port specifically defined that port. Uh, that's what I'm going to go do with an example and then use like these functional programming methods, the re, uh, the regular functional pro programming methods by Spark, and apply to get uh, uh, analytics or or the transformation the desired transformation of your choice. Moving on to actually coding a streaming pipeline with an example use case. So yeah, uh, what I'm gonna do, I've laid out the architecture via a diagram. Uh, I'm gonna use Twitter as a baseline of data. So the incoming stream would be Twitter. And I'm gonna use that to uh, use that uh, incoming stream of data across uh, a PySpark pipeline and use PySpark's transformation to, to kind of uh, plot out uh, the key components, the key things in, into a dashboard, we can say. Uh, it would be much simpler in my use case, but the idea is uh, uh, we get this stream of uh, tweets, real-time tweets coming in, in seconds gap, and then kind of we're recognizing this using a socket, we're getting this data using a socket and just pushing it forward using a PySpark streaming pipeline. Uh, to build all of this, I'm gonna use uh, the cloud. I'm gonna use a SageMaker instance within the AWS cloud uh, to kind of build all of this. You can do it locally, you can do it using a VM, uh, up to you. I, I already have like all these options one of my previous video on how you can set up your environment on with SpySpark. So yeah, do check out the article or the video if you're interested. So yeah, once you log on to the console, go to Amazon SageMaker, and uh, within that SageMaker, I already created an instance. So yeah, you can just go there and create one. I'm gonna start an instance with uh, Jupyter Lab, that's it. So yeah, I'm just gonna click on start. Now we're gonna code the, the first part until the socket. The idea is uh, we read this tweet from a library called TweetPy. Uh, it's an open source library you can use. Uh, the thing, one thing to notice, you would need uh, certain credentials from a Twitter developer account. So the idea is you go to a Twitter developer account and create your credentials, create an app with credentials, then you can use this API. Just note that I'm gonna add a link in the description. So the way it's gonna work, is uh, first of all, you're gonna import the libraries, uh, which is primarily TweetPy and a few like libraries like JSON and Socket. So the main the main uh, class you would be using is like a stream listener. You're gonna just inherit this class to create a custom one 
on top of it and then the next thing is uh, setting up your credentials i'm leaving it as blank but you get all these four credentials from our twitter developer account and then the main part starts uh, for the first stage this is like the first stage until the data goes to socket uh, you initialize the client socket uh, whichever is coming as uh, from the constructor and then the main part is like whenever this stream receives the data because we're inheriting that uh, class uh, uh, you need to do a certain action. The first is to, like load this data as a JSON because you read it as a JSON mainly. After you get the data, it in extract the text, uh, which is the main message dot text part, and then you kind of send it further to the client socket. So basically, getting this data in this part and you sending it back uh, for Spark to read. And then uh, a simple on error. What happens when there's an error? It's going to just print the state and return two. Keeping it simple for now. The next part is the main function, which kind of is handling all this class. So basically, uh, when we call send data, it sends uh, 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 handles authentication and authorization uh, from 3Py and then just starts the stream. And yep, so the, the last is the main function, which is basically uh, calling all of these and you're defining uh, the host, which is like you're doing everything locally, hence the 127, hence the local host. And then you have to define a port basically. Uh, this part outputs outputs the data into this port locally, and then uh, Spark Streaming would be listening there. While you're listening from this tweet listener class you just created, uh, you are actually tracking a set of keywords here. So basically, if anyone posts about certain keywords, you can just track it and get the data here uh, in near real time. And so for now, I'm, I'm keeping it one keyword. Uh, it's Ether, Ethereum, short form of Ethereum. Moving on to the next part of the pipeline, uh, which is building this PySpark module here and then connecting to a simple graph which shows us data in near real time. That's I'm gonna use a PySpark DS stream API. Uh, there are two things, structured streaming and DS streaming. Uh, structured streaming is relatively new and uh, now it's stable. It's, it should be easier and ready to use, but I'm like more familiar with this one. Uh, feel free to check out uh, both of them. They should be pretty similar. I'm gonna import the required libraries, which would be the Spark context and Spark streaming context here. I'm gonna also use the SQL context and some small function from PySpark. So the next would be creating the Spark context and the streaming context, SC, SSC respectively. And the next part is more important uh, where you're gonna start the socket stream. You're gonna create like a socket stream from the socket stream context you just created. And uh, basically from SSC, you're gonna create this uh, stream. The idea is it's gonna be listening to this local host with that port. After that, you define kind of uh, uh, the window like how in how much time it's going to try to read within that stream and it's going to read in, in two lines So if you remember we're gonna we are push, pushing the data from the other Twitter tweets listener uh, In only the text. So we're just pushing text there. So we're getting lines uh, in 20 second windows here And as in for the next step, uh, I'm creating this uh, small class. It's called name tuple It's similar. You can just consider it as a class called tweet which has two attributes tag and count so the idea is I'm gonna just uh, combine the like tag and do like small group bias using and, and create like counts, that's it. So yeah, the last part is the main part where all these um, Spark transformations are happening. It's more like a functional programming, uh, regular functional uh, functions you can just use from Spark. So the idea is I'm using this text to split. So we get this text into uh, words, basically splitting by spaces, we get all these words. And within all these words, we also are getting trying to, we, we're also considering the hashtags, so because some people use hashes, and then converting into lowercase, then kind of reducing it to get like keys and counts. Mm -hmm. So we're getting each word, we're getting word counts in each text. So the idea is we get all these different word counts. Uh, so for example, we are uh, screening Ether in real time, so we get all the other words in the tweets being used with Ether here. Yeah. So yeah, so the idea is you just run this uh, first, and then you kind of start your, uh, uh, three by streaming uh, from the other end. So basically a Jupyter Lab notebook kind of allows you to open up a shell. So that's what I did. I opened up a shell to run this tweet listener file as the next step. So once I click on this, it's going to start uh, uh, streaming uh, the data from Twitter to, uh, to this port 5554. Yeah. So let me just start it off and let's see what happens. So yeah, after I start this, I need to go there and stop, start my Spark streaming content and then it's going to start uh, reading from the data. So yeah, it's going to get a receive from this request to read. Uh, in a few seconds, it's going to just start accepting these tweets online. Oh, 
All right. So yeah. So the streams, uh, the streams of tweets are now popping in. Right now the data is coming till here. The next step is to just uh, switch everything on and kind of plot it into a chart. All right. So now as our stream has been started and our data is already being transformed. So basically all this layer has been complete and the data is being transformed on a real time. Uh, all the data is getting, kind of being appended to a registered temporary table within Spark context, which is tweets. We're just going to use a simple matplotlib uh, chart to showcase what's happening. So the idea is I'm going to do like key and count, as I mentioned previously, uh, what's the top keywords, uh, uh, um, what are other top keywords with uh, ether in uh, in the tweets. So, so yeah, you, basically for this to update automatically, it also depends. Uh, it also requires the data to come in. So basically now if the data is coming in on the uh, on this terminal, so these, these graphs should update automatically. Yeah, exactly. So you can see the latest hashtags uh, against all these uh, 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 with Ether in keyword, Ether as keyword. So you get the top hashtag as crypto, Ethereum, ETH. So, yeah. so this thing can become very useful in uh, real life cases. Probably someone who's investing in uh, uh, Dogecoins, and you, they want to know like the counts in real time because a lot of the times these markets are being affected by what's happening online. So yeah, things like that. Uh, it's right now it's very simple, but yeah, it can be much more complex and much more useful later on. You can do multiple things and multiple iterations of it. So yeah, uh, that's mostly it. And after that, whenever you're done with everything, you can just stop, stop the spot context and it will stop streaming and reading and transforming. So yeah, so yeah, that's mostly it in the, in terms of this video. I hope you guys like this one. It's very interesting for me at least to cover all aspects of Spark. Spark streaming is one of the most important ones here. So I hope uh, this was very useful for you to use. And uh, yeah, I would really like to thank you all to subscribing to my YouTube channel. Uh, recently it's gained a lot of traction and getting very good comments and feedback from you guys. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, subscribing and liking my videos and thanks a lot for watching. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.